Behind me is our Rise Spec Radical race car and I'm gonna put it to the test today. But not only that, the team is testing me and if I do well, I might drive a full Radical Championship in 2024. But I had no idea I was about to have the scariest driving experience in my life, especially coming from sim racing. And here's the thing. Richard will ask you guys last time because he's looking for next year. I'll say it cold and, and honest, he's looking for next year. My first time working with a uh, mostly sim Racer. Rice Pack is a professional team focused on young rising talent. Owned by a 27 year old, they have five championship titles and over 50 race wins so far. And here's my challenge I have just one day of testing. Then we race. You definitely see where some of the sim versus IRL differences kind of come into play. Especially at a track like Mossport, where it takes a lot of commitment, which means just being super brave. Definitely a little intimidating for the first time, especially in a high, a high downforce car like a radical. So put your hand on the bar. When you get down, put your legs in. Yep. Kind of hoist yourself down. It's tight, but... <laughs> like that seat looks comfy on you. Yeah, it feels like I'm a little bit too low. Oh, and low is good. You can't see a lot. But what could you see? Ahead of you, right? Yeah. And what do you want to look at? You want to look ahead, right? Down here is too late. That height is actually really good. Some people's eyes just barely peek over. You got like a whole like upper lip. Wow. Woo. It really looks like a very big go-kart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is, this is one of the things that you never think of. When you get in a car for the first time, you have to adjust everything to your height. Right now, it feels like the pedal is way too close to me and my, my, my legs are too bent. So we're doing some adjustment to make sure that I'm comfortable and not like pressing the pedal whenever we're in a straight line. Hit the red button. There you go. So if you're wondering like how it looks inside a radical race car, I had to read a manual on how to go, how to use all the buttons and all the controls and read all the LED lights that are in the dash. If you come here, here we have the master switch that's gonna turn everything on. And then here we get the information on water temperature, oil temperature. Here we have the brake pads, which is incredibly important for drivers who are getting very close to the limit and want to find that like fine tuning of the balance of the car under trail braking situations. First time? Yep. Feel good? Yep. It's just kind of like... Talk to me. Crushing my balls up. <laughs> it should though. Yeah? You want it to be snug, yeah. Oh god, okay. Have you pulled out in one of these before? A Formula 4, I think it's similar, right? Down. Now, let me take you on a ride in my very first time driving the Radical SR3 at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. I should already tell you that I'm about to have one of the most intense experiences in my racing career so far. This combo is a blast. The goal of this first session is very simple. Feel the car out, the pedals, the steering, the posture, the grip, and have an idea, really, of what I should be expecting when I'm going as fast as possible. All right, let's go. First time driving the Radical on track, just exiting the pit lanes right now, and I see that the track is actually a little bit wet. This is the very first session of the day, and I have to get to know this car as fast as possible, but I am definitely not still going flat out when the track is kind of damp. Let's try to just get up to speed, more or less, feel the grip, feel the, 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 the way the steering reacts, even the steering ratio. I have no idea how much I should turn and like how the track feels. Everything is so raw right now and I'm kind of super scared. I have no idea how much grip the tires have when they're super cold like that. I see that some radicals are already kind of overtaking me, which means I should already be going a little bit faster, but I am not going to do any stupid mistake right away. So I'm gonna be very careful. We're going through turn five right now. This is gonna be the slowest corner of the track. And then we get this huge, huge, huge back straight right now. I'm still not flat out. I'm starting to accelerate and now finally for the first time, I hit the throttle 100%, that's my teammate passing me, so I'm getting more or less an idea of how fast I can go, I'm gonna use him as a carrot, but again, I'm not gonna try to follow him too fast. As you can see, there are some really fast cars, that was an SR8, which is a much, much, much quicker car than ours, ours is an SR3, which has like half of the horsepower, then after the long straight, we have turn 8, which is supposed to be a very fast corner, so I'm lifting, I'm just feeling the car more or less, very slowly feeling how it behaves, when I get back on power, squeezing the throttle very slowly and then finally here getting a little bit more confidence, getting full throttle. This is the first time I'm gonna do turn one and big lift before some car like this is a revolution car passing us on the inside so I'm gonna let them go. I'm just gonna try to feel the car still. 
absolutely no going too fast here especially because guys i'm gonna be honest here i'm super scared like look at this corner here turn two you can see a lot you do a crest and then the second apex is a compression there's so much grip here i'm starting to feel how much grip this car has through my neck through how hard the steering is to turn i'm starting to progressively push the car more and more and now we're back to the back straight flat out getting a little bit more comfortable look at how fast this thing goes and then finally lifting a little bit early again just making sure i start slowly to feel where the limit is still way under on the high speed corners because i do want to test the car on the lowest speed corners this is just my second lap ever and i know we're gonna have the full day of tests here so just being careful when you look at the footage yeah it looks like not, it's not so fast but inside the car you are flying there's so much wind there's so much movement there's so much noise that it takes a while to adapt to what the car is capable of offering to you in terms of speed and grip. I think, honestly, this back straight on this car is one of the most fun experiences I've ever had. Racing in real life, it's impossible to describe. Actually, it's, it's so funny that I was actually able to feel how the wind was pushing my GoPro to the sides. So I started noticing that I have to do something to make sure that the GoPro is not going to be an aerodynamic problem to my own helmet and to my neck. As you can see, the wheel is a little bit misaligned. I'm definitely going to talk to the team about that. The downforce in this car is something that it takes a while to understand and to accept because the quicker you go, the more cornering grip you have. And although we do understand that while doing the simulator, in real life, it feels so unreal. Now let's go, let's try to do the fastest lap of this session. Is this one still lifting into turn one because I'm not, not still haven't grown the courage to do it, but get back on power very progressively, trying to get the front unloaded to make sure the car is stable, and then still lifting into turn two, getting the first apex, getting back on power, going wide, and then getting the second apex on the compression. Second apex being flat already, so we're getting a little bit more speed, light braking to turn three and trying to progressively roll onto the throttle to feel the car unloading the fronts and feeling that stable understeer on exit and then there's a super fast radical behind me so i'm gonna let him pass to make sure i try to follow him and learn a little bit more still not flat into turn four breaking hard into turn five realizing i'm actually still over slowing because there's so much breaking grip there's so much grip overall that i'm still kind of not believing it it's a matter of trust at this point and as i'm very very slowly building this confidence to drive a little bit faster in this car i realized that the session is already over and i'm literally 15 seconds slower than the fastest lap times uh, this was the worst ride of my life it was like crunching my balls and was hurting like oh man oh you should come in guy uh, go, 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 go. okay it's okay to do a little burnout okay don't embarrass yourself Practice 2 was still about getting that confidence up and although I was 15 seconds slower in the first practice, on practice 2 I was able to slowly build it up by doing better and better lap times. Although my first lap time on practice 1 was 135, I was able to do the following laps during practice 2. 8, 126.9, 126.3, 125.9, 125.8, 25.8 and finally 125.5 which was 10 seconds quicker than the last session. I know there's still a lot to go, but we are definitely in the right direction. So here is my fastest lap on practice two. Here we are down into turn one, finally doing it flat for the very first time without lifting, which is such an achievement for me right now. It is freaking scary to go down this corner with so much grip. And then turn two, I tried to do it flat, but I did lift a little bit because I'm still not ready. But it is my fastest one so far. And then breaking less and less into turn three, although I'm still doing this corner in fourth here, and I know that we should be doing it in fifth. So there's so much downforce to trust still. And then comes turn four, a flat downhill that was actually so scared of doing flat. And now I realize how easy this corner is in this car. It's actually not even a corner anymore. And then the most technical corner of the track, breaking hard the compression, climbing up the equivalent of five stories built and then getting super light on the crest and setting up the best exit possible for this long straight. My teammates are doing much faster lap times already and I need to be always on the limit of my confidence to make sure I get up to speed. I can assure you that I'm fighting hard against my fear of crashing today. I mean, just look at this footage, just look at this last sector and think, 
there is still five seconds of lap time to find. Just think about it. I wonder what the team is thinking of my progression. At least I can show them that I got 10 seconds faster in this session. We just need to keep improving like that on the next few sessions as well. How was that? A little bit better? Let's see, let's see. 25, dude, that's great. 25.5, good job. Every lap was like, let's try to get some balls. <laughs> You did good, man. You definitely grew some balls. Good, man. That's good for a first session, like a real session. This is the scariest experience in my entire life. There's no way to describe this. No matter what I tell you right now, unless you go there and do it, you cannot understand how it feels to drive a ride quite Mossberg. Everything hurts. My neck going down turn two feels like there's someone sitting on top of the head and someone pushing my head to the right. Now I st I'm starting to realize that I actually need to do the proper workout to be able to handle these cars. I'm still three seconds off. Still three seconds off. First session we were 10 seconds slower. Second session we were three seconds slower than the fastest guys here. Slowly getting there. Let's see. You know, the biggest challenge for me in this weekend is to literally find the limit in an approachable way by inducing understeer first. And here's how. You know that if you get into understeer, the car starts going on a very predictable path because it's refusing to turn more than that. The rotation is kind of limited. And because it's limited, you can predict where it's going in a safe way. And you know that it's not gonna snap unless you do something with the weight of the tires. To induce that understeer, you can just lift the front by accelerating earlier, shifting the weight back to the rear tires and then the car is gonna refuse to turn more than that. But basically what you do is you decelerate a little bit before the corner and you do the cornering phase while already shifting the weight back to the rear because you're gonna be at a lower speed and you will want to accelerate and that was gonna shift the weight back to the rear tires and then the car is gonna do the entire corner with the fronts lifted, which is gonna cause a very stable understeer. And it's gonna give you at least an idea of when the front tires get on the limit first. And here's the secret. If you get the front tires on the limit first, that is already very, very close to the limit of that corner. I mean, let's say the speed is 100 km per hour. By inducing understeer on purpose, you're gonna start feeling that limit when you are more or less 90 or 95 km per hour. And that is already so close to the 100 that it gives you an idea of how much speed you're gonna be able to carry on that corner specifically. After that, then we start carrying a tiny bit more because we know we are already understeering, so we know that's already close to the limit. So we start to increase the speed in small, tiny bits like 90, 91, 92, 93. And then after that, because the car is going to be a little bit quicker, then you're going to have to do the deceleration a little bit later into the corner until the point you are doing the deceleration while turning, which is what's going to make the car actually rotate a lot more. And that's when you start feeling that the car gets light and you're on the limit of both the front tires, but now also the rear tires as well. And that is the process. You get into understeer first so you can feel what is a safe approachable speed to that corner through understeer and then you start carrying a little bit more speed so you do the deceleration during the corner and you get the weight a little bit more to the front while doing that and the car starts rotating a little bit more and although this is so easy to explain and to do in the simulator it is my challenge for this race weekend the biggest benefit of that is that because you're gonna be so close to the speed limit you're not gonna go over the limit by too much at any point and by the time you lose the rear you're gonna be losing it a little bit if you don't get the understeer first by the time you get the oversteer it's gonna be already too much and you might lose the car and crash so that's why get to understeer first is always the safest and probably fastest approach to get safely on the limit at any track any combo because this is all still very new to me i am building up this programming in my head to safely find the limit through understeer first and then oversteer and get this right step-by-step -step guide in my own brain while driving a new car track combo <coughs> Now here's how practice three blew my mind. I wanted to only try the understeer exercise that the team coach asked us to do without thinking too much of lap times. And in my literal first lap trying it, here's how it went. I'm just gonna follow the plan. Decelerate earlier, do the corner while accelerating. Accelerate earlier, slight left here, and then do the corner while increasing the throttle, unloading the fronts, getting the tiny understeer. And we're gonna do the same thing for the next corner. Lift super early and then do it accelerating, accelerating, accelerating more and more and more and always keeping the weight on the rear tires. 
Same thing here, I'm gonna break earlier and then I'm gonna accelerate super early and do all the cornering phase while shifting the weight back to the rears. You see, just doing exactly the same exercise for every corner. I was trying to stay focused on doing the same thing, lift early and then doing the corner while accelerating the entire corner. A little bit of hesitation there, but I still tried to stick with it. And then finally, same thing, just breaking early, accelerating super early and doing the entire corner while trying to scrub the fronts. So I finished the lap, look at the lap delta, and I just did my best lap time? <laughs> oh god. I had to give up this session because it's too much, man. It's too much e-force, it's too much power, like, it's too much steering resistance. I could not turn more. I was like doing a corner flat out at 200 per hour and I was not capable of turning more the steering because it was so heavy. If you guys want to have an idea of how hard the steering is on a compression turn two, it's like, imagine 30 Newton meters on your, on your force feedback, peaked consistently 30 30 30 30 and there's more tomorrow there's all day tomorrow we have practice we have quality we have race and i'm honestly like thinking how much this car demands from us today was a i had to give up because i was afraid of actually crashing if i if i kept going i was i was not able to do fast laps anymore i did my best lap in the last session i was very happy with the progression but i had to stop for today after one day of practice suelio improved a lot but there's still a lot left on the table suelio's hopes and ambitions is to make the team next year but he's about a good two seconds off base, two to three seconds off base to the top guys that ran this season. And there's still two days left, so there's a lot we can improve on, but it will be a large uh, learning curve that's ahead of him. The other two boys on the team are about a second a lot faster than him. I believe in him. I know he has the understanding to do it, but compared to the other two guys, there is not as much real life driving experience in those cars. The other two guys already raced radicals before, and it's a completely different beast than the other cars that he drove because there's not a lot of steering input. The steering ratio is quite small in those cars. It's a very very rough car on the body especially around most sport where t1 is flat t2 is flat and t8 is more or less flat so let's see how the weekend goes but there's a lot to go grab out of this weekend it's a new day and although i'm completely sore from so many sessions yesterday i'm ready and confident to send it you can right away see how this time i'm the one overtaking the other radicals on the out lap and in a totally different mentality to find my limit as quickly as possible and keep pushing it from there maybe pushing it a little bit too hard as you're going to see very very soon i had enough energy that i was slapping fastest lap after fastest lap and my very first lap of the day was already at 23 6 and i didn't even force it too much i knew there was more so i kept going look at this i've never been so close to doing turn two flat which is the scariest corner in this track and i'm almost there it looks like after a great night of sleep things were just starting to click i'm carrying a lot more speed into the corners while still maintaining the car stable and now I have the mental space to realize how much more grip there is left to use. It feels like the first day was just for me to understand how much grip there is and to accept that. And now, on the second day, I'm able to explore it even more. We're getting there, chat. The next lap is even faster. And I want to try to explain how difficult it is to keep the right foot down on these corners. I swear. I'm telling my right foot to stay to the floor and at the very last moment before the corner it just freaking lifts on its own. I know these two first corners should be flat so I keep telling myself come on flat 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 and after a lot of struggle I was doing it on turn one but still not on turn two. And that my friends was my fastest lap so far this time I won 22.8 and I want more so let's keep going. Turn one is easy flat now confidence is on the roof until this happens. Although this didn't look too bad, when I showed this footage to the team, everyone was like, oh my god. Because this was the closest anyone got to crashing in this weekend because of how dangerous a snap to the other side after the correction would be. We're doing this corner at 200 per hour and if you overcorrect and go all the way to the right, we're going straight to the wall. So I had to be very quick when the car gripped back so I could turn again to the left to prevent the snapping to the other side. Basically what happened here was I turned in a little bit too early and ended up hitting a patch of grass that is a little bit taller than the track itself which made the car jump a little bit and by the time the car landed it got itself into a slide. 
and I am very glad that I was able to catch this light without creating a slingshot effect to the right, which would be catastrophic. Although we had that little moment, this was my best session so far, with a best lap of 122.7. And next up, we have the race. race one we have one simple goal get more track time maybe follow the pack and get more comfortable with the car i'm competing with some drivers with years of experience here so i shouldn't expect anything miraculous for my first race just remember that yesterday i was learning how to turn this car on and here i am already putting myself in the jungle and trying to compete with some very experienced drivers but nothing else matters when the race starts because adrenaline kicks in and the racecraft instinct just kicks in as well as soon as i started this race i wanted to go fast and i realized that everyone was being ultra careful and i was having to lift not to hit my teammate ahead i was going to the outside here into turn two and realized that my teammate was over slowing a little bit on the inside so i decided to i don't know just accelerate be on the limit and I realized that I was able to make the pass on the outside of this turn two corner that I was so scared before now here I am racing hard so I don't know something just clicks and you become a racer when it matters the most we started at p5 now we are p4 and p3 is right ahead and I'm gonna do my best to stick with him my teammate behind me though he was faster the entire weekend so in case he regains the pace and he gets to my tail I'm gonna let him pass and try to learn from it but right now what we want to do is maximize these co tires and get as close as possible to the pack ahead breaking hard here into the turn five and trying to get as close as possible to them to get the draft on the back straight but ended up making a mistake and not going as wide as possible and that double apex and did not get as much as a good exit but the draft that we get here in this back straight is insane this is the first time i'm driving such a high down force car and you can actually feel how the wind is different when you're behind a car and how much more speed you can build up on the back straight it's insane but with draft comes dirty air and i have no idea how this car is going to behave so i'm not trying to go flat out with extra speed into this corner with dirty air at least not yet but yeah it was kind of like too big of a lift so i actually lost probably three or four tens on that corner enough but i'm kind of like catching up a little bit in some corners we have 30 minutes to find our own pace and push it from there now let's see how i'm doing turn one here lap two i'm doing it pretty much flat just a 10 percent lift actually catching up with p3 ahead and then doing turn two lifting a little bit getting a little bit of the rear and being scared of how the car is going to behave in the rear but also a little bit quicker and catching up so this is looking good it looks like i'm very fast in the first sector at least in the beginning of this race let's see what i can do in turn three catching up a little bit under braking so that means i'm braking later but in the exit he's actually carrying a lot more speed there is so much downforce that you think there's gonna be less grip but there's a lot more grip available than you think and i was never really trusting how much more speed i could carry on that exit now it looks like i have a much much better braking into turn five but i'm still not trusting how much grip i have mid corner and i'm over slowing right before the exit and that's why he's still getting a better exit than me even though i'm catching up two three or four tenths just under braking and again look at how powerful this draft is i went from being far behind and getting closer and closer and closer and closer to the point where he was actually feeling threatened and went to the inside to defend the corner but i'm not close enough to try anything so i'm just gonna lift and stay close and try to study where are his weakness so i can try something later i'm lifting less and less behind him kind of getting a little bit more comfortable with the dirty air and learning how it feels more and more now what i didn't tell you yet is that although it feels like i'm just focusing on the race i am hitting my fastest lap times lap after lap so just having a carrot having a car ahead of me is making me find so much more confidence because chasing someone is kind of like getting hypnotized we're getting into a different zone and you just want to catch up and follow them at some point i realized that i was actually just catching up because i was benefiting a lot from the draft and the driver ahead of me was actually faster than me i saw the yellow flag so i was a little bit more cautious and i saw the car on the outside so that distracted me a lot and i didn't know how fast i could go so i actually slowed down a little bit before the exit and i realized that that created a gap between p3 and me and i lost the draft from now on he started picking up the pace and i started losing him lap after lap after lap after lap after lap but hey here's my achievement of the entire weekend doing turn one flat and also turn two Honestly guys, this is all I wanted to do for this weekend, to gain more confidence and to trust the car more and more and more. I knew I was not going to be super competitive on this race. As you can see here, I'm letting my teammate pass because he was behind me for a while and I wanted to see if he was faster to see if I could learn a little bit more. But at least I am pushing my own limits further and further. Now I know exactly what I should do on race 2, 
where I should find time. I'm gonna talk to the coach and I'm gonna talk to the team. We're gonna find that 1% that's missing on some specific corners that's making me lose so much time consistently. My goal right now is to consistently be at the limit and find that energy to maintain that aggressiveness while driving on the entire race. Hey, good job, man. Nice race, man. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't fast, but it was again better time. Better. I got some good stuff too, like in the beginning. You see the flag go, and everyone's like, zoom, 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 zoom. Yo, good race, good pace. I saw you were faster. I was like, just go, man. It was more predictive for me to follow you. Better. 21A. T1 and T2 flat all race. I just, I just like, I did a mental repurposing. Like T2 is actually not scary just do it flat and then I get the car and it was easy and then the next car let's try that again I, and, I, and I thought T2 is actually easy like why are you even thinking and then boom and then I love boom. that why are you and even boom. thinking and I then love boom. And now there's no way it's not flat so not everybody's taking T1 T2 flat no T2 how come you were faster than me and I was like behind you like doing T2 flat my helmet came loose I was doing T2 with one eye that? my helmet was going up and it squished my left eye close so That's I'm just exactly. barely looking at T2 as I'm flying down dude that happened to me the same thing that then was you scary dude my neck oh my god i honestly started feeling sick it gets harder and harder keeping your neck up each lap you're so fast at turn three and five you saw how you, you yeah five up again on you yeah I, saw that. I was more than ready for race two this time we could find the last dance and actually fight for a podium but it turns out that it was a disaster and here's why Although the start was good, something started happening with the car and I started losing a little bit of power. The car was just a little bit weird and I started losing position after position after position after position until this happened. Okay, so I'm gonna watch the end of the race from here. <laughs> Just on the runoff, I'm basically behind the guardrail. Okay, are you still in the car and they're gonna kill you? I'm outside the car and I'm waiting for the race to end. We are in a quite privileged spot here right now. I mean, guardrail, if anything happens, I'm just gonna hide here. <laughs> This week was only possible because you trusted my work as a sim racing coach. My top level online course, the Motor Racing Checklist 1.0, was a huge success and we have over 2,000 drivers registered. Now, after one year and a half since launch, I'm finally launching a much better and more complete version, the Motor Racing Checklist 2.0. And here's my promise to you, sim racer who's on the fence about taking the course. If you don't cut your lap time deficit by half in 30 days after taking this course, you'll have your money back. 100% no questions asked. That means if you're two seconds off, you will improve at least one second in 30 days. If you're one second off, you'll improve at least 
half a second per lap in 30 days and so on. I'm doing this guarantee because I've seen the results and they don't lie. You have improved massively and this feels like mission accomplished to me. So here's the deal. Get the 1.0 before the 24th of November and you will get the 2.0 course for free. Register now and I will personally assign you to the new version on the day it's launched. I've been working 10 hours a day for months only on this course and that's the reason I've disappeared a little bit but it's definitely gonna be worth it. We have hundreds of reviews on my Discord, so go check it out if you want to know if it's legit. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe because there's a lot more real-life content coming up if we continue to have this amazing support from you guys. Thank you.